Chasing Purpose was designed to empower, uplift, and enlighten you on your journey in chasing your purpose. Chasing Purpose. Not too late for us to try. We can overcome. Chasing purpose, candid conversations, nurturing faith, pursuing aspirations, setting intentions. Together we rise, why did we fall? Yeah. Jolly the way. Chasing purpose. Cause God always a listen. Chasing purpose. One day I have to win. That's why I'm a try again. Chasing Purpose, Mondays, 7 p.m. on Arijam Radio, Arijam 360, or arijamradio.com, hosted by Cynthia Shea. Welcome to Chasing Purpose, heard every Monday at 7 p.m. right here at our home at Irie Jam Radio, on our app at Irie Jam 360, as well as IrieJamRadio.com. We love to hear your views and reviews. Please share them with us at 888-546-8742. That's 888-546-8742. You can also email us at ChasingPurpose on IrieJam at gmail.com. Stay connected with us via our social media platforms on Facebook, Chasing Purpose, and be sure to join our Facebook group entitled Purpose Swords. Follow us over on Instagram at Chasing Purpose underscore on purpose. Be sure to follow, like, and share. Yesterday was Mother's Day, and I want to take the time out to send my mom, Junior Dawkins, an extraordinary happy Mother's Day. Mommy, I love you. You continue to be the driving force in my life. And to all mothers out there and fathers who play the role of mothers, we salute you. Due to the overwhelming response we received from last week's show with international transformational speaker and author Jeffrey Azan, we've decided to rebroadcast the thought-provoking conversation we had on impact. Grab your pens, grab your journals, grab a glass of water as we continue our candid conversations. What you pay attention to will impact your value, and what you value influences what you love. I read this statement recently, and the word impact jumped out at me. Impact is defined as the action of one object coming forcibly into contact with another, or to have a strong effect on someone or something. These are the definitions I came across while doing my research. On last week's show, our guest, Nicole McLaren Campbell, shared insight on the topic, Finding Your Tribe. She also shared her personal belief that life was not meant to be lived alone. And if you're going to aim, always aim high. Gems that we all can live by. Welcome to Chasing Purpose, a curated space designed to help you along your journey of purpose. Using our four pillars, nurturing faith, setting intentions, pursuing aspirations, all while living boldly. I am your host, Cynthia Shea, and I hope that we leave you with a positive impact each and every Monday night. Tonight will be no different. I am joined by an international transformational speaker, author, development coach, and distinguished Toastmaster, Jeffrey Azan. Jeffrey is the founder of Select and Start, a brand that aims on bringing out the full potential of each individual of or organization through motivational speeches, workshops, and coaching sessions. Welcome to Chasing Purpose, Jeffrey. How are you? I am excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Tonight we're talking about impact. Indeed, indeed. What does the word impact mean to you? Ooh, all right. Well, out the gates with fire. Yeah. Impact <laughs> to me is really about that transformational thing that happens in any interaction. Mm -hmm. You know, very often we look at life in the sense that there has to be a grand event. There has to be a major moment. There has to be something way outside of even our understanding to mm -hmm. change the trajectory of our life and mm -hmm. we often label that as impact, impact. Mm -hmm. True. but in my life I've come to appreciate that every interaction becomes impact that's true I'm sitting with that. you here today and we were having a conversation mm -hmm. and who knows you may say something or I may say something yeah. or you may have a look or something may happen on set yeah 
and I will take that for the next 30 years yeah. every time I go on set. Yeah. I may, and I'm going to give the audience a little backstory. Yeah. So before we started, <laughs> <laughs> we had a big energy session. Yes. But that, that left me now. That yeah. impacted me. Yeah. It wasn't for me, yeah. but it impacted me. Yeah. So, I love my crew, by the way. There you go. <laughs> so everything that crosses our paths in our little circle called our life, mm -hmm. our universe, mm -hmm. our world, creates impact. Yeah how long it lasts, how deep it goes, what it affects thereafter is left to be understood. But yeah. everything impacts us. Yeah, what, what I pulled from that was like every little instance, every little interaction creates some sort of impact, yeah. which is so important. Yeah. I didn't say this, guys, but make sure to grab your journals because Mr. Azan will have gems. <laughs> what is the difference between effect and impact? That is... It's hard to distinguish, but I, I use this example when asked similar questions. Mm -hmm. If I was to unfortunately cut you, mm -hmm. the effect would be the separation of skin and possibly the running of blood. Mm -hmm. That would be the effect of it. Mm -hmm. And later down the road, you will have a scar. That would also be a part of the effect of it. Mm -hmm. But the impact would have been the transformational value of me cutting you. You may now yes. walk with a fear. You may have a fear of me. You may have a fear of knives. Yeah. You may have a fear of men, and the list goes on. Yeah. So the impact is the transformation that happens because of the transaction. Mm -hmm. The effect is simply the symptoms of the transaction. Wow. I, I love that. <laughs> I, that. That was a great perspective. Thank you. Do you think one's outlook on life influences their, how they make an impact? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go back to it. The way I see the world is based on my beliefs, my perspective, my understanding, and the list goes on and on. Without trying to go too deep into my story right mm -hmm. now, <laughs> at the beginning of the interview, I can tell you that a lot has transformed in my life mm -hmm. to the understanding. For example, I grew up always hearing phrases, and there are hundreds of them, but one particular phrase stands out in mind at this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, only a dog love a bone, mm -hmm. referring to a woman must have meat on her body. Now, just hearing that catchphrase over and over and over, it begins to influence my belief of beauty. Yeah, okay, yes. But then as time went on, I began to see women who I considered beautiful, but yeah. by that definition, they shouldn't be. Yeah, and by the way, I'm sure a whole man came up with that. Oh, I'm, actually, I put money on a woman came up with it, to be honest. Women tend to tear down women quicker than men. This, this is true, but we're, cha we're changing that narrative for Mr. That. Azan, okay? <laughs> for sure, for sure. So we definitely have that realm where what is said to us, what we interact with, the society we keep, the friends we keep, it's all going to influence how we see everything else. Mm -hmm. And how we see things is how we interact with them. You may have a dog. I might be afraid of dogs. I come to your house. I'm terrified. I don't know what to do. And it could be the sweetest little, mm -hmm. I don't know, shisu. Mm -hmm. You, on the other hand, cannot even grasp my fear of this dog. Yeah. That has nothing to do with the dog. It has everything to do with what we believe. Correct. So belief, as, as one speaker puts it, belief is the filter in which we see the world. Mm. Belief is the filter in which we see the world the world. Mm -hmm. Belief is the filter in which we see the world, which is so crazy because we live, we live life right now yeah. with filters. Oh, for, Everything of a filter. True, true. And, that, and you know, it's, I've never made that connection before, but that might be why filters have the attraction they have because they change the way we see the world. And how, the, through the belief. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think we unlock something. We unlock something. For sure. I hope we're going to write that down. <laughs> Who was the first person that impacted your life? The first person? The first. I mean, the doctor that took me out, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> if okay. you want to be super specific okay. about it. Uh, actually, I, I'm currently working on my, I guess you could call it my autobiography or lessons from my life. Nice. I mean, typically people tell you, wait until you're old and retired no, and coming out. I'm just saying, I'm just, belief, belief, belief right. of this society okay. tells you. Okay. I mean, when I wrote my first book, it was called Weekly Lessons from Life. Yeah. And the first question I got was, what do you know about life? Mm. You know, live not me yet. Right. So, belief. Belief and perspective. Right. So, I began writing the book and what it eventually turned out to. It turned out to about 25 moments. And we're still working on it. Mm -hmm. So, you can look out for that later this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it turned out to be 25 moments where something seemingly insignificant happened, mm -hmm. but created radical transformation. Mm -hmm. So, I even go back to the doctor. 
I had a cousin who unfortunately was stillborn before me, okay. which I guess you could say motivated my mother to change doctors okay. because they actually had the same doctor at the time. All right. And when I was there and they were inducing labor and stuff, I, apparently I never wanted to leave. So they put her <laughs> on a drug to induce labor. Yeah. My heart stopped. And when my heart stopped, you heard the infamous, you know, uh, hospital shout out mm -hmm. code blue, mm -hmm. which basically roughly translates to patient is now in danger of being mm -hmm. terminal. Mm -hmm. My mother was there when my cousin was born or stillborn. Mm. So when everybody heard code blue, that, yeah, everybody sure. shut off. Right. But the doctor, this new doctor, turned to my mom and said, just said, Mrs. Azan, a baby will not die in five minutes. And if necessary, I can deliver this baby in less than three. Wow. But what I need is I need you to trust me. Wow. That, so you, you, as I said, impact was happening in my life before I was technically even here. And, and, and can, can you imagine her having the experience of unfortunately mm -hmm. witnessing her family member mm -hmm. go through that? to be put almost in the same situation and just hearing those words, yeah. trust me. Just trust me. What impact that made mm -hmm. on her. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we could have, have a chills. whole- <laughs> Like, oh my God. We could have a whole talk about that. I mean, that's literally what the book turned out to be. I didn't, mm -hmm. that was not my intention to mm -hmm. set out, but mm -hmm. it just turned into little conversations like that. You know, following that, aside from the impact on my mom and my dad, and my dad, at this stage of my life in my professional journey, many would say has been the largest impact. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about that a little mm -hmm, later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I would say outside of my mom and my dad, mm -hmm. I would say the mm, too many people. I would right now I'd give it up to my grandfather. Yeah. If I had to give it to anybody, I'd give it to my grandfather. He has walked a very straight and narrow path. Mm -hmm. And when I was at my absolute lowest, absolute darkness, totally confused on life. He was the one that provided, once again, in very simple terms, the direction, which was, you need more understanding. And he provided me a book that, mm -hmm. you know, go read this. And in reading it, it transformed my life. And it's so funny. It's something I talk about in my presentations. It's, mm -hmm. it's a problem with formal education. Mm -hmm. Formal education makes kids I'm hate reading. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Go ahead, go ahead, um, go ahead. I'm having a moment. <laughs> That's fine. As you talk about your dad yeah. um, and your grandfather having impact, like my dad right now is going through a lot. Right, right. <laughs> having suffered a stroke four weeks ago and it has been really hard on us. And you know, I just, he's a fighter though. Like these, right, cry, right, these right, tears right. are not tears of anything but joy because my father's fighting. Right, right. And faith is, um, has been that little mustard seed of faith that he has, that determination is um something that like right now as we talk about impact is impacting me like so much sorry oh god all right no, all that's right good. that's good that, <laughs> no but then again no if i was to flip this you know i'm not the one supposed to be doing interviewing you <laughs> <laughs> but we're just going with the flow of things <laughs> right what is hitting you now and this is me stepping into my coaching role yeah what's hitting you now has nothing to do with him having a stroke no What's hit, hitting you now is the impact he's made on your life. Yes. And if you yes. were to actually look back on your own life, mm. yeah, he probably did some amazing things, mm -hmm. but the things that you are hoping to have again yeah. are the small things. Yes. Boy, I'd love to go for lunch with daddy. I'd love to have an ice cream with daddy. I just want to sit and watch TV with daddy. Yeah. You're not saying, boy, I can't wait for daddy to be there yeah. when this next major thing happens in my life. Yeah. So yeah. if we're talking about impact, yeah. I mean... yeah. Yeah, yes. that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's oh, what it wow. is. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's, it's about those meaningful moments mm -hmm. that transform our lives. Yeah. And both creating them in our own, creating them in others. But then I think the hardest part for us is accepting those moments from yeah. others. Very often we like to believe we are masters of our own world mm. when the reality is we live in our world with other people living in their world yeah. and the magic happens when those worlds intersect wow wow um this exchange was exactly why chasing purpose was created um 
I mean, tonight is very raw. <laughs> and um, there's a reason, I believe that there are no mistakes made, there's a reason, Jeffrey, that you were sent here for this particular show this at this particular time. Um, <laughs> can anyone make an impact? Anyone, everybody, anything. Yeah. A dog that greets you when you come True. home has an impact on your life. True. A parrot that mimics somebody talking can mm. give you a laugh, which will create a memory which can impact your life. In fact, one of the things I try to encourage people to do, especially in one-on-one -on -one coaching, is how many smiles can you give? Because you don't have to do a lot to give a smile. Yeah. You know, If you go to buy fast food, did you greet the person before you gave the order? Yeah. Did you say thank you for taking the order? That alone, you, know, you never know. I give that server that greeting, maybe even that compliment. Yeah. Boy, you look nice. Boy, you should smile yes, more. Yes, you trouble yes. them. You, you make mm -hmm, fun, mm -hmm. but you give them a smile. Mm -hmm. You don't know if that's their first smile for the day. Because what people carry as baggage and load sometimes, you, don't know. you cannot even fathom. No. And a lot of the time, we tend to not allow people to carry their baggage. But we allow, what we do is we compare. Yes. We say, oh, your father had a stroke. Well, my dad, not in my life. Yeah, yeah, Let yes. me tell you about it. Yeah, as if you know, and my mother, is, she do crack. And at least you have your... So it becomes a competition, yeah. you know, rather than just empathizing with the person to say, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. If you want to share, I'm here. Mm -hmm. If you want to cry, go ahead. Yeah. There is no need for the pretense. Mm -hmm. And we take it from there. You know, a, a, a lot of us forget the human being. And we just tend to get up every day and try to be. To be. Do you believe we're all born with a purpose? Woo! Boy, like you just not ease up at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Uh, for, my whole thing is based on finding purpose. My whole experience, mission, my reason for being here mm -hmm. is because at one point I didn't believe there was purpose. Mm -hmm. I then found it. And now in many ways I'm on a mission to help others discover theirs, pull it out, show them how they can use it, show them how they can monetize it mm -hmm. and walk in it because Purpose is the only thing that's going to differentiate you from anybody else. Yes. You know, if I yes. had you and let's say you had yes. an identical twin. You don't have an identical twin, I do, do you? Not. All right. So let's say you, identical twin, mm -hmm. born in the same home to the same family during the same period. You went to the same school. You had the same classes, the same teachers. You're put in the same extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. And yet you turn out to be two totally different people. Mm -hmm. I believe that's because of where purpose is. Yes. You worked in the family business for 18 yeah. years. From I was, from I knew myself. From I was nine years old, I never really knew a summer or Christmas. And I was never the boss's child in mm -hmm. a lot of senses. Mm -hmm. I, my first job was wrapping gifts for mm -hmm. tips. Mm -hmm. And before, before our, yeah. our, 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 oh, our... put it in Yes, put a, tell us where, what the so family the, business is. The family is. business is called Azans. Mm -hmm. And without going too much into it, family, last name Azan, mm -hmm. great-grandfather started it each generation below split it up so actually all azans are not one company mm. each azans is actually a different company mm. but they recognize that the jamaican populace recognize azan as a brand so everybody mm. named their thing azan super center azan mm. super stores mm -hmm. azan mm -hmm. discount mm -hmm. fabrics azan house of fabrics mm -hmm. but they're all different companies okay. each generation split it more and more and more okay. so and for those who are international who you know, you're watching this, but you don't know what Azans is, yeah. which I find strange. I'm just going to be <laughs> honest. Uh, the real, Azans would kind of be your mom and pop's version of Bed Bath & Beyond mm. in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. That's how I would define it to an international mm -hmm. audience. Mm -hmm. So in that, nine years old, know myself, I'm able to, you know, carry some weight around. First job, gift wrapping. Mm. And I had to work for tips. Mm. And if you didn't get tips, you didn't get paid. <laughs> so you are on equal level with everybody else yeah. i mean my parents weren't going to make me go hungry mm -hmm. but at nine years old not really understanding that they kind of put in a safety net in place mm -hmm. somewhere there i was like oh, i have to wrap this gift i have yeah, to wrap it yeah, better yeah, than everybody yeah. else i have to wrap yeah, it fast yeah. and you know it's funny you, you think you're educated and then you get around people who have developed a skill mm -hmm. and you realize in some instances your education don't really matter mm. And that was one of like my first lessons in realizing that I went to school, I was literate, I was even considered bright for my age and my class. Mm -hmm. And yet I couldn't wrap a gift to compete with these guys who were barely literate, mm -hmm. you know. And this is not to put anybody down. This is just no, their I circumstance. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. People put me up on the cross for yeah. them kind of thing here. <laughs> but the reality is, is that 
you know, these are guys who, due to circumstance and situation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the only thing they could read and write in some cases was their name. Mm -hmm. And yet I could not keep up with them. And then from there, life went on. And so every summer and Christmas, I had a job in some regards, you know, went from gift wrapper to bag boy, janitor, warehouse worker. When I got my driver's license, I became the truck driver. Mm -hmm. From there, I eventually started to work in a warehouse. And it didn't really matter how much education I was getting or mm -hmm. what level of school I was at. You worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so... I, those are great, 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 great <laughs> values, oh, yeah. morals, things that were instilled in you. And I'm sure the person that you worked with, no matter where the background from, they created some sort of impact. Oh, for sure, for you. sure. I mean, I... <laughs> That would have to be a whole episode in and of own, itself, yeah. the nightmares and <laughs> dreams of retail. Yeah. But that's where I intrinsically learned the lesson that business has nothing to do with a business selling a product. Mm. Business has everything to do with people helping people. And I mean, mm. we can go into the whole thing on service and value, but you know, mm. some of my most remarkable moments in my life came from working with both staff as well as customers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember working with a blind man one morning who came with a list that one of his neighbors had written. I couldn't mm -hmm. make out half of what was on the list. Mm -hmm. And it took me more than half of the morning to, to build his basket for him. Mm -hmm. I asked somebody to walk him to the bus stop. He said he never need any help, all of that. Two weeks later, his entire community came to the store mm -hmm. because I took the time out to serve this one blind okay. man who in the grand scheme of business, really wasn't making that big of a purchase. Mm. And that was a large part of my retail existence. Mm. But because I also became very clear that I didn't enjoy retail, there was a major void in my life in what I was doing and what I was pursuing. Mm. And this is something that has become one of my major missions out there. Don't just get a job for getting a job sake. sake. There's nothing wrong with getting a job to get you through a period. Mm -hmm. There's nothing with getting a job to give you some sense of financial security, mm -hmm. but do not settle because you have a job. Yeah. You know, so Mark Twain says it best. Don't let, don't, I've never let my schooling get in the way of my education. Mm. Don't let your job mm. get in the way of your dream. Mm -hmm. There is so much to unpack there. I mean, I can't, and let me just start here. Cause I, I, I kudos to your parents first for recognizing that they shouldn't, put you in their box of no you have to yeah, stay you have to work and you have to continue on mm -hmm. whatever this legacy is of retail right, kudos right. to them for recognizing that and I, I can't tell you how much parents I know Caribbean parents I know put this put their children in this box no you have to be either business owner doctor lawyer this and that so it's and, not their fault. and that no because and, but that's what I'm saying right. it is not their fault because that's what they knew that's what right. they were taught so these generations I was limited here so if you can get here yes. you'll be better than me and <laughs> yeah yeah guys i um yeah. yeah but it comes right back i don't mean to cut you but no. I, I want to not miss this because it comes right back to the question you asked me before do i believe everybody has purpose most people sell their purpose for a job yeah. Yes, <laughs> they do. And this is, this is exactly why Chasing Purpose was created. So everybody understands that no matter where they are in life, whatever, no matter what stage, phase, age, mm -hmm. you have a purpose and you do not have to sell yourself out no. because of that nine to five. No. Or because right now it says that influence is the, in the thing, is a thing to do. So go do that. That, that you, mommy said you have to be a nurse or a doctor, so you have to do that. Yeah. No. No, it, it's absolutely not. What it is... So let's dial it back. Let's actually solve a global problem. Mm -hmm. Let's use Irie Jam to take our global problem mm -hmm. on. That's right? what we do. That's what we're here to here, do. Here is this. The problem starts in the second grade mm -hmm. because we never ask a child what do they want to do. We ask them what do they want to be. <laughs> what does a child in second grade actually know? Yeah. Yes. So you get the same answers. Yes. I want to be a policeman, a fireman, a nurse, a doctor, a this, a that, or yeah. whatever mommy yeah. and daddy want to be. Yeah. Now, if you actually sat with that child and asked them, what do they like doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I like working with teams. Or I like playing football. I like winning. Mm -hmm. I like being creative. I like painting. I like puzzles. Then you begin to get an insight. Okay, that's what they like doing, a.k.a. That's the skill set that they're naturally gifted with. Nobody's going to do anything that they're not naturally gifted at. Yes. Now that I understand what you like, I can now expose you to a world of careers that will facilitate, enhance, and celebrate 
that skill set. Mm. But that doesn't happen. In the second grade, you say you want to be a policeman. Somebody either tells you that's great or okay. that's stupid. Mm -hmm. And then you either go, yay, mm -hmm. or, yeah. oh, well, I don't know what I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. This is not something I read out of a book. This is what happened to me. Yeah. Because in the second grade, I told them I wanted to be a teacher. Mm. My mother, very lovingly, very kind, with guidance and mm -hmm. hope and desire in her mm -hmm. heart, said, great, lovely, noble. You have an aunt that does it, an uncle that does it. But just remember, teachers don't make money. Mm. And in my second grade brain, I went, well, I don't want to be a teacher. Right, right. And I spent the next 17 years not knowing what I wanted to be. And at 25, wow. I had a stranger who had no previous information of me sit in a conversation. We're doing a little business together. And he said to me, Jeff, have you ever thought about being a motivational speaker? At 25 years old, university educated, traveled the world, relatively well connected, decent network, decent family. I did not know what a motivational speaker was. Nice. I had never been exposed to the concept of a motivational speaker. So when I told him, I was like, what's that? He said, it's somebody who goes and they speak and they teach to get paid. And I was like, everybody can chat. Mm. So I was already discounting that I couldn't do that. Yeah. Because I spent 17 years saying that I'm not going to be a teacher. Yeah. So I said to him, eh, everybody can chat. And he says, yeah, everybody can chat, but that's not what you do. Mm. You speak, you teach, you, you get passionate. You, I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to hold myself back on the episode. No, but don't. the reality is, the reality is, is this is what I do. This is what I love doing. You don't have to pay me to do this. Yeah. As much as I'd love to go to JPS and say, JPS, I am out here making a difference. Please don't charge me like this month. <laughs> I have to create a business out of it. Yes. I have to find yes. a way to make income out of it. Correct. But the reality is, whether you pay $10,000, $100,000, $200,000 dollars to come to a conference and see me or stop me in the street at a cafe, you're going to get the same, Jeffrey. Wow. And your second grade self, Knew that. Knew I knew that. I wanted to yes. teach. Yes, you know. And a lot of kids know that. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, course. I want to be an astronaut. Oh, you'll never be an astronaut because we don't have the money. Maybe they don't want to be an astronaut. Maybe what they actually are saying is I love stars. Yeah. Maybe they want to be an astrologist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if we just guided them just... Through we, the love. Yeah, through? Through, through the, love. the love. Yeah, yeah, through the love. Because purpose is attached to love. You cannot have purpose without love. Jesus have mercy, Father. Purpose is attached to love. Where's the bullhorn? Wait, I am not adequately equipped here, guys. Purpose is attached to love. Wow. You can't live in purpose if you don't live in love. You cannot live in purpose if you don't. Who is this guy? Talk to me about um, your faith. Ah, uh, that, that was a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. uh, born and raised in the church, so a lot of my scriptural knowledge comes from, you know, Judeo-Christian scripture. Mm -hmm. Mom is a ardent Christian. Like, mm. well, her, her faith makes a lot of people look like a joke. <laughs> Most moms. Um, I mean, I tell this story all the time, but I think a lot of Christians out there don't really know what faith is. Mm. Uh, and I share this story just to kind of, not as a measuring stick, but as a self-reflection. Mm -hmm. It's a mirror to hold up against yourself. Mm -hmm. So my life story, without getting too much into it, at 17, a lot happened in the family, and my dad ended up leaving the family. Mm -hmm. That ended up destroying the business because he was the major director of the business. Financially, we're in a problem. As a family, we're in a problem. And then even there was a situation where he owed a lot of people money, so when he disappeared, even livelihood became a problem. Mm -hmm. Like, there are actual death threats and the whole wow. nine yards. It was an action movie for maybe 18 months of my life. Wow. And I remember my mom not knowing what to do at one point. I mean, I was like 16, 17, mm -hmm. and I'm... Um, and I'm trying to be there for her, but I don't know what to do. That's I don't 16, have a clue 17. what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing my mom one night. She threw her Bible on the ground and stood up on the Bible and looked up and said, God, this say, me must stand upon your word when I don't know what to do. Well, me don't know what to do. So me literally, I stand upon it tonight. And in like a week or two weeks from that moment, she got some, somebody came up to her and was like, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your problem, but you have a decision to make. You either choose bitter or choose better. Look. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The person don't done there. And they said, and if you're worried, remember, the children of the righteous will never beg for bread. That is faith. So, I mean, I grew up knowing that. 
And it's, it's so weird that even knowing that I have had to walk my own journey in my own way. Yeah, yeah. At 13, you know, Junior Gang and Sizzler were running the music industry, so I was fully on the Rasta train. I was ready. <laughs> I said, Junior can make it work. Me, must can make it work. Uh, big up, big up Junior Gang, <laughs> right? wherever you Big up Junior. And, and Sizzler, and Sizzler. Oh, no, still a big Sizzler fan. Yeah. And, what, and there was an appeal to it, and I believe there's still an appeal of Rastafarianism in the sense that the people who prompt it mm -hmm. are, are passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, at this stage, they don't have all of the, the we we'll call it the political mix-up that a lot of the Christianity faiths mm -hmm. have. have. Mm -hmm. So I had that attraction. As time went on and I learned more about it, I realized a lot of Rastafarian belief was kind of just based in Judaism. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, maybe this don't really stand on its own. So then I was kind of shook again. And then I was an atheist for a while. I was like, why do I even believe that there is a God? Is this mm. just me being programmed by my mother? Mm -hmm. And life went on. And it kind of came to this point where I said, well, there's some universal truths. Mm -hmm. And one that is irrefutable is you don't get something for nothing. True. There's always an exchange, even if you don't understand the exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for me, that kind of led me back to a faith in God, hmm. not I, 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 I still pull wisdom from scripture, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you that like I'm a diehard Christian, okay. but I pull wisdom from scripture. Anywhere, anywhere there's wisdom, I'm going to pull it from. Yeah, yeah. But I have a faith in God. And for me, what God is, regardless of faith, belief, belief what you want to call him, God is an irrefutable unstoppable force of the universe yes. and that force yes. funnily enough is love is christianity right is buddhism right is hindu right is islam right i don't know mm -hmm. and i'm not trying to know mm -hmm. i'm at a personal stage in my life my religion is love i pull wisdom from the bible but i believe in love and god so that would be my long answer to faith Great answer. <laughs> God is love. Are you chasing your purpose or have you found your purpose? So funny, coming back to pulling from scriptural knowledge, I had a salt of Paul moment mm. where I had just had this conversation with this guy. I was still working in the family business mm -hmm. and I was driving to the family business and on my way, I was just asking myself, what am I here to do and why am I here to do it? Mm. And the questions were just rinse and repeat. What am I here? Why am I here? What am I here? What am I Going, 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 going. And just down the road from here, mm -hmm. the, by the stoplight by the Canadian Embassy on Waterloo Road, mm -hmm. I came, it was a red light, and I stopped at the red light. And at the moment I stopped at the red light, I left the vehicle. My mind left the vehicle. And I saw myself on a stage in front of an audience, nighttime, open air dome, I was wearing a blue pinstripe suit, white button shirt, and I couldn't see the end of the people. And I was saying something and they were clapping and there was an excitement, a happiness. There was a betterment in the moment. And then I came back to the car and I was weeping. Weeping. And I called the guy, his name is Kibo, he became my first mentor. I call Kibo and I say, yo, Kibo, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm doing in my life. I'm going to talk. I'm going to be a speaker. <sighs> you know, I, he was like, Big oh, up okay. Kibo wherever yeah, he man. is. And I was like, he was just like, Jeff, anything you say, anything you depend, like, I'm there with you. I'll yeah, help you out. Yeah. And that became the journey. That was about June 2013. Mm -hmm. And by September 2013, I had the trademark for the company logo done. Mm. and I never really look back. I mean, I've, I've had to, and this is why I tell people, like, sometimes you have to do your nine to five to pursue your dream. I never mm -hmm. know nothing about speaking. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know mm -hmm. how to connect. Mm -hmm. So I still had jobs. I still had part-time jobs. In mm -hmm. fact, one time I, I had to take a part-time job as a manager where I was getting paid 50% less than the people I was managing mm. in order that any speaking opportunity I got, I could leave okay. for the day and oh, go okay. do it. Yeah. So that was the condition. Yeah. I was willing to do that because I wasn't going to sell out this dream now yeah. for a job. Yeah, that moment where you were at, at the light at Waterloo and you say you left yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I can only define it as a salt to Paul moment, you know. Wow. And, 
the biblical story, Saul is on the road, yeah. tax collector, yeah. on his way to do what he's always yeah. done, yeah. Yeah. gets hit with this bright light, this vision, yeah. loses his sight, and then when his sight is returned, he's now Paul, a man of purpose here to spread the gospel. And that, that's the only relation I can even conceive that relates to it. What impact do you want to leave on the world? My big vision is to transform the way the world sees Jamaica. Mm. I think Jamaica has a lot to offer overall. I think Jamaicans, in fact, in my books, are some of the hardest working, yes. most driven, mm -hmm. most creative individuals yes. out there. And the examples speak for themselves. You send a Jamaican overseas, mm. you get glowing reviews about their work ethic. <laughs> People who could have shown up to work before yeah. all of a sudden holding three jobs at yes. a time and they're <laughs> eligible for manager <laughs> position now. So I believe in the That's potential true. of Jamaicans, mm -hmm. but I also know that we are limited for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. So my hope is in what I do, spreading positivity, personal development, coaching, motivational sessions, etc., etc., mm -hmm. I can impact the consciousness of the Jamaican populace mm -hmm. so that the same way if Jamaica was to hold a reggae concert, mm -hmm. the world is going to come simply because it's reggae in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I want the same to be true about personal development. If Jamaica was to have a personal development conference, wow. I want the world to come simply because it's a personal development conference in Jamaica. In Jamaica. What is your why? My why? Whew. That really, that, to, to explain why I definitely have to give the backstory. Mm -hmm. uh, something, I wasn't really trying to avoid it, I was trying to save <laughs> it for the right moment, and this is the this right is it. moment. This is it! My why. So, I already shared my dad left when mm -hmm. I was about 17, but mm -hmm. what matters to that point of the story is that I, for the large part of my life, I measured myself against my dad. Mm. As I believe, and in my studies, I find a lot of young men do. Mm -hmm. They measure themselves against their dad, yes. their uncle, whoever the male figure in their life mm -hmm. is. Who my dad was and what he did impacted my belief about the world. Mm -hmm. He was a great businessman. He was a great husband. He was a great father. He served the community. There was nobody he interacted who had less than praises to say about him. Mm. In fact, you know, there are people who tell you he transformed their life, he saved them from a situation. I mean, real, I mean, hallmark, good guy yeah. type of person. Mm -hmm. And I measured myself and I said, if I can even be half the man he is, mm -hmm. I'll be a great man. So when he left, and it was a case of infidelity, why he left, mm -hmm. All the values he taught me, every standard he gave me to live by, everything I look forward to fell apart with him. Mm. But the problem is I maintained my measurement. So instead of saying, I'll be better than my dad, I'll, I'll succeed where he had failed, what I ended up doing is I said, well, if he can't do it, there's no way I can do it. Mm. You know, when I'm on the stage, I share it this way. I still wanted to be half of him, but half of zero is error. Mm. And that's how I felt. Wow. And from about 17 to 21, I had major spiral. Drinking excessively, smoking weed, womanizing, the relationship I had fell apart. I didn't believe I'd ever be a good husband, a good father, a good partner, a good businessman, because if he couldn't do it, what chance do I have at mm -hmm. doing it? And my life was seemingly spinning out of control. And so that's where I was. I was angry at the world. I was angry at him. I was angry at everybody who he was friendly with. Mm. That anger turning, combined with the self-reflection eventually turned into depression. I was angry with myself because I couldn't achieve. And then that became a cycle. So you drink, you smoke, you womanize, you go to your party, you hide everything in pleasure. But when the pleasure passed, I was still left with in the problem, space, yeah. which made me feel angrier at myself, mm -hmm. which made me feel worse about myself, mm -hmm. which just continued to spiral until I was really grappling with suicidal thoughts to the wow. point where suicide made sense. Wow. And this is what a lot of people don't understand about people who commit suicide in the sense that we, you can't understand why would you take your own life. But here, here's what a, a suicidal person thinks. I'm in pain now. I don't know when this pain is going to end, mm -hmm. okay. but I can end it now. And death is, and if you have actually an intelligent person, they're going to even reinforce that by saying, 
I must die someday. So, so why wait? Yeah. Why suffer from now till then? And once that makes sense in your mind, which is where I was, it's no longer a question of if, it's a matter of when. So where was, there, there was a shift somewhere? So what ended up happening is, you know, and I have to say this is faith, this is prayer, this is good energy, this is love, whatever it is the right people were there at the right times. And they would give me a reason, oh, not today. You know, I had good roommates. I was in college, I had good roommates. They were like, no, they weren't just about pleasure, but let's enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And so they kept showing me good things in life, but I kept feeling that I wasn't of worth. Mm -hmm. The radical transformation happened one day. I'd come back to Jamaica, I'd gone back into the family business because what else am I going to do mm -hmm. in my life? I'm mm -hmm. not worth mm -hmm. anything. This mm -hmm. is my thinking process. You're thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And somebody came to sell me something. Mm. And in his sale pitch, and it's, this goes right back to our first conversation, mm -hmm. everything is impact. Mm -hmm. In his sales pitch, in trying to sell me, he saved me. Because he said, Jeff, when last have you lived the life you've chosen versus lived the life you've been given? And he had no idea. What he, he had doing. not a clue what wow. I was going through. But it, I took that piece of sales pitch and it became my motto. So because I know what not having a purpose is, mm -hmm. because I know what not having a why is, because I know what impact men go through in silence for simply lacking a male figure in their life, for simply lacking a potential hero, because we're not seeing it in the politicians, we're not seeing it in the pastors, we're not seeing it in the comic books. You know, everything has to be over-dramatized these days. Mm. They're really, you know, the amount of men that start as these great role models mm -hmm. and then some scandal ends up cutting their legs out mm -hmm. from underneath mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I hope, and part of my why, because why is complex, mm -hmm. but a big part of my why is to be that role model. Not to be perfect, mm -hmm but to be flawed and honest with my flaws. Again, I have to unpack. <laughs> somebody right now, somewhere in the world, mul not somebody, multiple people right now are hurting, yeah. are in the space you were yeah. before that sales pitch was pitched to you. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to appeal to that somebody, that whoever right now that is listening, that is watching, wherever, that's going to rewatch the YouTube, appeal to them right now. Let them know that that now that they're feeling is not final, yeah. that yeah. they have to push past that now. All right. So here's where we're going to go. I want you, first and foremost, if you're listening to this, we're going, we're going to do an exercise. I want you to realize how amazing you are right here, right now, in this moment. I want you to close your eyes and just listen to my voice. And while you listen to my voice, I want you to realize that you can hear your breathing. And what you're breathing is not just work in the lungs, but you're breathing in life. You are actually taking in life. The reason that if you can't breathe, you're put on life support. Appreciate that. Sit in a moment of gratitude that you have the ability to breathe in life. Even if you're listening to this and on COVID and on a ventilator, you're still breathing in life. If you're hearing me, you're breathing in life. Mm -hmm. I want you to move from that to hearing your heartbeat and realizing that never stops. That between life and power, because that's what your heart is. Your heart is power. You are here to make a difference. If you didn't, you wouldn't be hearing me. Mm. No, I know you struggled. You might be struggling. You might be going into a struggle. But the reality is you're only going to grow from your battles. We'd love for the world to be easy flowing. We'd love for the world to fall into place. And we'd love for it to love us the way we want to love. But the reality is growth comes with struggle. You can only lift more weight if your muscle gets torn first. You can only handle rougher situations if you build the calluses. You can only have growth if you go through growing pains. We come back to your belief and I'm going to ask you, now that you know that you're here with life, now that you know that you're here with power, now that you know that your struggle has purpose, the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is just to take 
this small seed and shift your belief. Your belief is going to change how you look at that struggle. If you look at that struggle as a struggle here to tear you down, then it's going to do just that. But if you look at that struggle as the opportunity to grow, if you look at that struggle as the opportunity to swell into the person you are, if you look at that struggle as the necessity to tear away the layers of society that have buried you, whether it be poverty, sickness, illness, COVID, separation, lack of education, ignorance, lack of opportunity, the struggle will strip those away and move you into a position to demonstrate what is really sitting at your core, your purpose, your value, your power. And it's going to give you an opportunity to bring it to life. You don't need to do something grand to change the world. My life was changed by a conversation. Mm -hmm. My life was saved by a few words. Mm -hmm. If you can share a few words verbally, written, sign language, you have the power to change the world and anything beyond that. Live in love, live in gratitude, and recognize that because you're here, you have the power to change the world if you simply believe it. You just saved somebody's life. I hope so. You I certainly so. did. I mean, I don't even know where do we go from here. Um, let's jump to our epic intention cards. Right, uh, setting right. intentions is something that we believe in here on Chasing Purpose. And we were gifted these lovely intention cards by Miss Stacy Hines. And they are simply brilliant. They literally... Um, I mean, off camera, we've experienced them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, oh, no, I'm not going to cut the deck. You're going to cut the deck. All right. Shuffle it up. Shuffle it up. Yeah. Never a good poker player, but I'll, <laughs> you know, do what I can. Uh-huh. All right. Light um, shuffle. Light shuffle. All right. Um, you pull. Pull. Anywhere? Yes, anywhere. Or, okay. Um, go for seven. These cards are pretty big. All right. Yeah. That looks like that one's about seven. Okay. Uh-huh. And I'll just pull right after you. Okay. Okay, you read yours. I already like these cards, by the way. <laughs> so my card is titled, I am the light of the world. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I allow my inner light to shine. This is what we just said, folks. I allow my inner light to shine. Embracing opportunities to teach, share, and expand. No, this is a little scary. All right, let's go back. I allow my inner light to shine, embracing opportunities to teach, share, and expand the universal knowledge of my fellow humans from a place of willingness and love. I, yeah. I might take this card with me, just so you know. Um, just, just, <laughs> just to be clear, guys, this is not pre-planned. No. We don't, you yeah. know... Line up yeah. the cards with the guests before they come. This is literally, this is, this is happening. All right, mine. This is the artwork. The artwork is simply brilliant. Also, I surrender. I trust the universe fully and completely with all areas of my life. Let go and let God. Wow. Damn it, that ugly cry again. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We're going to have him on again, guys. Make sure to share this show. Um, make sure to, you know, just get it out there. All like, the get stuff, it out like, there. subscribe. All of that. All the stuff, <laughs> like, subscribe, words. follow. All of that. Where can our audience find you? So you can find me on most social media platforms. Jeffrey J. Azan. That's LinkedIn, IG, Twitter. I'm more of an IG person. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know mm -hmm. what's going on in my life, IG. If you want to reach out for me business-wise, the business is Select and Start. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just yeah. here, happy to serve. Yeah, happy to serve. <laughs> happy to serve. As am I. Brace for impact. You often hear this term a lot in movies when a plane is in distress. So when a hurricane or snowstorm is about to happen. The word brace meaning preparing for, being aware of, being mindful. In this instance, being mindful of what you say, as well as how you carry yourself, ensuring that what you say matches what's in your heart. It is in that honesty, that vulnerability, that authenticity that your words and your actions make the most impact. 
I leave you with this timely message. Recognize that every interaction you have is an opportunity to make a positive impact on others. God bless and good night. Rise to the occasion, look at yourself and say you're strong. No one can stop you, oh yeah. Rise to the occasion, go ahead, you know you're strong. No one can stop you. It's for you to make the best in the life. Now that you've got the chance, get a front step towards your goal, it's so right. Fulfill your needs and demands. Some people read and meditate, others move scanty, yo. Some people are conscious about life, others are still panting, yo. Some people like strong drink, cognac, champagne, and brandy, yo. Maybe